It's about time for, you know, what we've all been waiting for. Yes, it's time for our breakout session. Right, like finally. <laughs> okay, this session is a critical part of our engagement today, which is to develop practical roadmaps which government, private sector, and donor community can action. So as we have heard today, cabin food crisis would require a multi-pronged approach. We must have a holistic look at the food system, consider all angles and perspectives, and listen to all voices. You can choose from the nine breakout sessions, which will all be facilitated by industry experts. All right? So ushers will be around with signs to direct you to the breakout sessions of your choice. As always, we would carry along our online participants uh, who can also select the breakout rooms of their choice by clicking on the appropriate room on your screen. So start calling out the breakout sessions and uh, uh, you might pick whichever one interests you. One, Mr. Folusho Adejaru, Policy Advisor, Food Security and Climate Embassy of the Kingdom of Netherlands in Abuja, will be facilitating the breakout session on primary production where you'll deep dive into addressing input shortages, scaling last mile distribution and extension support services for farmers. Two, Miss Emma Odundo of GIZ will facilitate the session on food processing, looking at fast tracking local processing of proudly Nigeria food and alternatives to imports and addressing the power challenges to reduce the local cost of processing. Three, for the session on distribution and logistics, Mr. Kamal Dean Raji, the MD of FX, will be facilitating a strategy for minimizing the cost of diesel and the high cost of transportation. Four, trade is a make or break for food producers as every farmer needs to market to survive. Needs market to survive. Dr. Ezra Yukusak of NEPC will facilitate the breakout on halting hoarding, price fixing, and ensuring greater transparency and accountability from farm to fork. Five, a safe and secure environment is essential for the prosperity of any society, and we see this increasingly becoming more and more of a concern. Dr. Bola Karimu, FCDO, will discuss the issues related to addressing insecurity in farming communities. And then six, the business of food and agriculture cannot be separated from nutrition. Dr. Michael Ojo, the country director of GAIN, will be discussing the role of food fortification in curbing the looming food crisis. And then seven, Fisai Okayo Day, the Productivity Improvement Manager of the Advanced and Local Dairy Development Program in Nigeria, will facilitate the livestock section, looking at driving growth and productivity in the livestock sector in an equitable and sustainable manner. And then eight, we have Mr. Andrew Smith of GIZ, will facilitate the session on equity and inclusion. How do we begin to close the gender gaps and unlock female farmers access to growth, capital, and other resources? And nine, finally, Mr. Deji Adebusui, a principal at Sahel Capital, will be facilitating the discussion on starting and scaling resilient agribusinesses. So these are the nine breakout sessions. Uh, the facilitators should kindly come up on stage so we can, you know, take um, a photo and then, you know, we break out into sessions. Like I said earlier on, the ushers will be here with, uh, you know, uh, should I call it placard or so? They've gotten it there. So you choose whichever group uh, that interests you at this moment. So please, the facilitators that I've called out earlier on should kindly make it down to the stage. Thank you very much. And we look forward to your active participation in the breakout sessions. AOD, Mr. Andrew Smith, Mr. Deji Adebusoye, and also Dr. Michael Oju. Please kindly come forward. Let's have you here on stage. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please, can we fill up the seats in the main hall so that we don't have empty chairs for the sake of the video, please? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. 
Okay. All right, Mr. Kamaluddin Raji, is he here? Okay, kindly come forward, please. Five minutes. I wanted to break it down to three minutes, but uh, <laughs> so you see, I've stinged you with time. So we have three minutes to, to do this. Okay, I'll say we part. Say what? Say part. No, no, no. Am I part? So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Kamal Raji. I work at FX. So from my group, um, we want to discuss um, distribution and logistics and how to reduce the cost of diesel. So just like everyone in the hall is quite aware that uh, diesel, it's on, um, it's more or less like an external factor that anyone can consider because it's primarily controlled by the federal government then to the marketers or whosoever is handling it. But can we leverage uh, two, three things? And that's, that is to say we speak to storage facility because a lot of us from that group spoke to their experience. And even after paying big money to send whatever they have from one location to the other, that most of those stock especially perishable, get to location, the drop point at zero. And they are fully, fully exposed to repaying uh, whatever the cost is to, to, to the person buying from the other end. So what we, what we discussed was, one, can we, do, can we put ourselves in cooperatives or groups? Groups that will say, Thursday is a major market from this axis. And if I'm sending just two metric tons, there's 15 other guys that are sending two metric tons or five other guys that are doing 10, 5, 3, 2 and making up a truck so that whatever you aggregate in that day, it's not sleeping over in the market. It's get out of the market that same day and it can get to somewhere. With that, uh, if the cost of logistics from Kano to Gombe is 180,000, then you know this is going to be shared by four or five people and it will be better for everyone. Then the other thing is we need to leverage technology so that whosoever is picking up will not be calling you ahead of time to say, I've gone there, they are not there, this is not here. You leverage technology, put up a, a tracker on it, on the truck, you get, make sure that which, whichever truck, whenever you are using any truck, that truck is insured, get good in transit uh, insurance, so that if there is a mistake, if there is a loss anywhere, you can get a way to get your money back. Two, three is reorientating ourselves around how to undo post affairs um, stock. That is, how best do you handle it? Uh, we got an experience from someone that said, because of the rain, whenever it's sending grain across anywhere now, it needs to buy a polythene bag apart from the usual white bag that we know, you buy like a nylon bag, put it inside, then put up the stock, uh, the grain inside that nylon bag, put it in a, uh, in a PP bag, then you sow it. Even if there's rain, you can see across board that uh, major, our major fertilizer companies, they are doing this. And it makes the fertilizer to stay for a while too. Then lastly is, um, how do we equip ourselves to meet up with the exigencies of this time? Uh, in the very closest site, we are not seeing anything coming back to... Diesel used to be 180, 200, but it's over 800 today. And there's no government policy that speaks to before or post-election that diesel will come to 600. So what do we do? Can we speak to organized uh, transporters uh, to make sure that um, whenever we need to send out anything, they get us everything needed. And because of their knowledge of, the, of whatever you are sending across, especially for food, they can handle it better. God is good, can be proud to say they can move anybody anywhere today. What is someone looking at to be like God is good, providing five uh, metric tons truck, 10 metric tons truck to move on daily basis from major markets to Lagos or to 
any part in the south where the market is. And with all this, we can reduce costs. We can begin to see um, collaboration working out. We can increase our networks. And definitely, there's, uh, there can be a way out of this preponderance problem of diesel costs. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Let's give him a round of applause. But I'm going to challenge you because what and I'm see he's the first person to go so please other presenters what we need is for you to say these are the three things we agreed in our group one what I heard you say is one we're going to foster a collaborative approach yep. to diesel di collection and distribution yes. using technology and Apex is going to do X Y and Z by X Y and Z dates so we, we had a goal. number two no you still have to come back I'm, I'm, I'm repeating. I heard what you said, but it wasn't action-oriented, and I didn't see okay. any... Re you mentioned God is good. Are they in the room? No, yeah. So we're giving them work, but they're not here. So what I would like is very actionable, mm -hmm. concrete suggestions. Who is going to do what by when? And if the person is not in the room, or the agency is not in the room, what we want them to do by when? Okay. Because what we're collecting, which we're going to present to all the ministers that were represented here, as well as the development partners is a very clear action plan and what we need them to do mm -hmm. and what we ourselves are going to do otherwise it becomes another talk shop so we're sure. going to come back to you all right your work is not done the team needs that very practical yeah. action step okay noted let's give him a round of applause so it means that the next set of people coming up know they have five minutes and it has to be action oriented so when you start telling me the diesel price is 600 it's not going to come down that's not action oriented is it clear I'm going to be a teacher. So who is ready to go next? Who can take on the of excellence? Thank you. Michael or Joe Gain, please yeah. give him a round of applause. Thank you very much, um, Didi. Thank you, um, everyone. Uh, I stood up not because I'm going to deliver exactly what Didi has asked, but I think it's better to go early. Um, so we, the group that we were in was talking about food fortification as a solution to our nutrition, well, to our food secure and nutrition security uh, problems. And um, we had a mix of people, and partly the reason why the actions may, what we, what we agreed broadly was, let us actually identify those solutions. And to the extent that we can, what we in the group can do with them, but also recognizing that we need other people to really get this down. So. Uh, please bear with me. The first thing that we, we decided was food fortification, and we talked about two, two types, large-scale fortification and biofortification. Uh, part of the reason why we should really be talking about food systems rather than you know, different components of this uh, problem. So we need a system uh, thinking around this, and some of that is in the recommendations. The first one is about imputes. Currently, Ministry of Agriculture provide free imputes, seeds, stems, especially for bio, now we're talking about biofortification. But what we realized from the conversation was, it is nowhere, nowhere near what we need in terms of uh, the volumes. So um, what do we do? We have institutes like NIFO, like IITA and others who are supporting some of SIP. We need to find ways through government, and that's through the Ministry of Agriculture, but also through the Seed Council, to expand the potential for these organizations to, to create outgrower schemes of, or other schemes that would help to expand this capacity. Otherwise, we will not be able to get to the scale that we need. So that, um, and then the second question around that was, it's currently free, should it continue to be free? I think we need a policy conversation with government on this between Ministry of Agri, Ministry of uh, Trade, and other ministries that are, in, that are involved to see whether we, currently we, we have it for free, can we do that for some time, but move very, very clearly towards a commercial basis for how these seeds come on the market very soon, so that we don't have two markets. Currently we have free, and then we have the market-based ones. Number two, very quickly was um, around um, collaboration between the MDAs. So when people started talking, it was clear that Ministry of Agriculture is doing something, 
on um, large scale fortification, about fortification. Ministry of Trade is doing something. They have conversations through some of their value chain um, associations who help them to come up with policy. But there's still a big gap because they then go off and do their own things. And an example was like somebody who wants to invest in, um, in biofortified crops gets imputes from the Ministry of Agri, potentially needs some equipment that they will speak to Ministry of Agri to support them with, maybe to buy or to part fund. Ministry of Trade also are dealing with the same person from an industrial you know, production processing perspective. But there's no real connection between the investments that government is making on, on both sides. So Ministry of Trade might invest in some people, Agric invests in some people, both of them are not connected. And so some are producing, some are looking for inputs. So we need to find ways of bringing them more closer together. And so maybe we need some value chain, interdepartmental, interministerial uh, systems that we can put forward. Again, we couldn't really drill down on what would that look like, but this is a, a solution going forward. Number three, um, or number four, I think I'm, to, I'm on to now. Uh, we, we actually came up with a really good idea. Homegrown school feeding, and thinking about, especially about fortification, but also large-scale fortification, but maybe more about fortification. They have OFSP and some of these other kind of crops within the you know, the, the range of foods that they produce. But we can use the homegrown school feeding as a, an off-taker, a market, to create a system around the production for some of these crops, whether it's vitamin A cassava or maize or potato, orange, orange fleshy potato, which are staples, within state systems, because these things are state-based. And if we can identify about three or four states where we can start this work, then we can see how that works, connecting the farmers with inputs from Ministry of Agri, connecting them with support um, for processing through FMITI, connecting them with the market that the homegrown school feeding provides in the state. So we have a system that we can um, hopefully then see begin to translate. Number five, sensitization. 30 seconds left. Thank you. Sensitization and awareness. We are talking about deficiencies that are still at you know really worrying levels but we have solutions in large-scale fortification in biofortification but are people aware and people were talking about the kind of sensitization that came around salt iodization in the 90s when it was introduced around vitamin a and eyes in the in the 20s we need something that big and that national to get people back onto understanding the importance of this issue. So I'm not sure where that sits. It could be with um, government, but it has to be government led because the private sector don't necessarily have um, uh, an incentive to do this. F finally, markets. You know, the, we've talked about all of this, but it has to be in the context of markets. If the markets are not there for about 45 crops, people are not gonna grow them. So a lot of work still needs to be done to create new products and which then become the markets for these crops so that we can connect them to the production. Sorry, Ndidi, I may not have fulfilled all your... Uh, so is GAME taking these responsibilities on? Yes, we are. And okay. We, I don't want to talk too much about... So COVID. on the website after this, we'll have all the action plans yeah. and the contact details for the anchor organization. And in your case, it's GAME. Uh, yes, and there's a paper that you will find. Fantastic which paper. A lot more exactly. So a that paper is going to be sent to all the participants from this conference. And the next steps will be from GAIN. Please give Michael Ojo a round of applause. <laughs> Madam, are you ready? Are you going to do what you, are you going to follow the plan? I will try. Five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Please introduce yourself and your group. Thank you. Uh, my name is Emma Odundo. I work for GIZ NICOP. I was in group eight where we were looking at food processing. And so um, some of the action points that we agreed on, it may not exactly follow your format, madam, but please bear with us. Um, one of the things that uh, we looked at is the, um, the fact that in the processing space, already there is a lot in terms of the government initiatives that are there. 
So we had very strong representatives from the Ministry of Agriculture, FMITI, and they were able to talk about you know, some of the initiatives that the government already has that need to be exploited, but people or processors are not just exploiting because of lack of information. So one of the key points that we agreed on is that there is need to create awareness in terms of what support exists within the government ministries that small scale processors and anybody who wants to get into the processing space can actually earnest. Some of these included um, duty waivers on raw materials, on machinery, uh, 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 also things like, you know, um, tax holidays, which already exist, but so many of us are not aware of. So there is need to create awareness around this. And government, um, I mean, like um, development agencies that are working in the processing space can actually partner with the government ministries to be able to create awareness around this. And that is an action point that can be taken. Then we also looked at how really, because we are aware of the fragmentation on the processing sector, because you find there are so many SMEs that are existing within the sector and you really bringing them together even for uh, regulation becomes a challenge. So the cluster approach is something that we discussed at length as one of the solutions that can actually provide uh, a platform upon which a number of things can be actually channeled to uh, processors within the landscape in Nigeria. So the clusters approach for support, whether it is in terms of you know organizing the processors in a way that they can be trained or organizing them for information dissemination, um, cluster approach is something that yes, um, as GSID, yes, we are doing that and it's something that we can, I can commit to, that we are actually um, already in that space. Then um, there was also the issue of, you know, moving away from the traditional funding mechanisms because access to finance is a challenge. So how do we be, how can we be able to bring in, bring in innovative kind of, you know, um, funding initiatives into this space? Something that will run away from, that will make us run away from the traditional loans that sometimes require collaterals. There are young people that want to engage in that space. And if you look at collaterals, probably they don't have that. Again, um, you know, innovative funding initiatives is a way forward that our group was able to discuss. Then we also realize that the, sometimes there is very little or very weak follow-up systems. Development agencies, for example, create a lot of initiatives around processing. Sometimes they even invest in um, technological innovations where you find, you know, a um, 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 multi-million um, dollar um, uh, equipment has been set up in a specific community. But you go back to that community two, three months, five months, one year down the line, that facility is there, it is not being used, and nobody is doing anything about it. So again, strengthening the follow-up systems that we have, mostly as development agencies, but at the same time, you know, private sector actors that are probably working or, or uh, teaming up with, with uh, development agencies, the government themselves, we need to really strengthen. 30 you know, seconds the left. Six. Then there was also need for audit to just be able to find out, you know, what is existing where. That is a challenge that was also mentioned, but then there is a lot of opportunity in audit and finding out, you know, what, what would be um, available. Use of technology, I can't belabor that because through the technology, we can be able to um, disseminate information. We can be able to also, um, you know, support issues of aggregate, aggregation, support issues of market access and the rest. Uh, then um, I think the last thing that I would want to point out is creating the space for private sector, um, you know, involvement. That is something that is, is, is it's not just, uh, I mean, like it, it is non-negotiable. Because we realize that the government funding is competing with various, um, in various sectors and therefore there is a huge space for the private sector uh, involvement, especially in processing, and we need to bring more the, of uh, the private sector involvement in this. I think that is what I have from my... Thank you so much. Yes. So I heard one clear commitment, GIZ, in clustering and support. I'll also add another commitment from the Africa Food Change Makers that we're willing to partner with FMITI and Ministry of Agriculture to have uh, First Thursdays devoted to the tax holidays, information. information sharing, but we'll pick a few. Incentives, tax holidays, waivers, duty waivers, because getting those are not easy. 
I can tell you as an SME. <laughs> so we need them to also make it easier, but we can commit. So all the SMEs here who are not on Africa change food change makers, please get on because we're going to be partnering to take some of these on as a commitment, right? Between now and the end of the year. Thank you very much. Let's give her a round of applause. I'm still, I hope we're getting better. Each, it, it keeps getting better. GIZ has made some commitments. Apex, before he leaves, he'll make some commitments. Gain has made some commitments. Let's hear from you, sir. Five minutes, please. You're not giving them rounds of applause to encourage them. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Folusho Adejaro. I work at the Netherlands Embassy. And uh, for my group, we were trying to look at the issues around uh, input shortages and uh, how to address them. Um, there are four action points, uh, if you put it that way, that we, we agreed could help address uh, these input shortages. The first here is um, the role of aggregators or offtakers of uh, commodities. So um, we believe strongly that uh, they can work with the farmers to provide inputs and also to aggregate these products uh, at the time of harvest. And as a commitment, uh, the Nasarawa Agro Commodity Company, Nasako, uh, is committed to working with um, 50,000 farmers in Nasarawa State starting this year. And then by next year, also provide input loans in, in form of inputs to 20,000 farmers and um, have the market available so thank you so nasara state government was here and they made that commitment nasara was uh, agro commodity company agro commodity company thank you all right uh, the second is looking at the farmers as major stakeholders themselves so what is an impediment to assessing uh imputes and uh, we agreed in the group that uh, farmers would uh, attract more investment to themselves if they work in groups uh, and then make sure those groups are, proply, are properly run and then they can assess um, extension services and now looking at um, climate change it's important that they also learn uh, sustainable practices uh, looking at say composting and agroforestry so farmers as the stakeholders themselves also have a role to play so um, was there any farmer organization that made a commitment or agra or any f uh, f fmad because that one is too broad. That one is. Uh, well, we had uh, a, a group, I can't remember the name, but I'm sure it's led by Ilyasu and uh, a doctor. Um, okay, so you get back to us. Yes, Otherwise, it's a very. In the audience. It's a, a very nebulous action point. Okay, so I'll, I'll get that. Uh, and then the final is with the financial institutions themselves. Um, even though they are not here, it's important that uh, they know that they have a role to play in understanding agriculture. All right, it's not enough to just have an agri team and post someone there because it needs to be promoted to the next level. Uh, we need financial institutions to understand the role they play and what the pain points are for the farmers and how to better develop products to address. Thank the you. The financial institutions were here. Stand big. Or not in our group. Or not in your group. Yes. Okay. All right. That's the work we think that they would... Uh, okay, thank you. So like my brother from Apex, you still have some work to do. Only one action point had a clear owner. Uh, yeah. Come back to you. Thank you very much. Let's give him a round of applause. The reason I'm pushing for ownership is otherwise the idea goes out there and it floats. And when we meet again, you guys will say this was a talk shop, right? And we want to be able to come back to our participants to say this is what has happened since the conference. It gives people hope. It makes them believe that there's progress and that their ideas are being heard. Do you understand? Otherwise, if we call you next year, you say it was a waste of your time. So I don't mean to pick on everybody. I'm just saying we really need to push on that. Thank you. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ndidi. Um, right. So uh, my, my name is Bola Karimo. I work with the uh, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, uh, UK government. Um, so in my group, my group was group six, and we spoke about security and safety and um, how to address insecurity in farming community. Um, I'm afraid I'm, I, in terms of commitment, it uh, might be quite difficult because of the nature of the uh, security architecture in Nigeria. Uh, but I think one way of, kind of showing commitment would be to leverage on the strength 
of Development Community. Um, the UK government uh, is very active as part of the international development community in Nigeria. Um, we lead the uh, key political partner group, uh, which consists of UK, US, uh, Canada, and a couple of other uh, friendly countries, as, as I call them. So we can potentially leverage on those. So I won't go into sort of specificity in terms of uh, how to um, uh, commit to this. Yeah. So um, we did recognize that security uh, sits at the heart of everything you know, that we're discussing today, whether you're looking at um, facilitating investments um, into Nigeria, FDIs, or financial flow from Lagos, up north. Uh, at the moment, um, Kaduna State is almost um, impossible to work with for us uh, in terms of the nature of uh, uh, risk priority um, in, in Nigeria. So, so that there's a lot of um, uh, issues, you know, beyond um, the immediate with regards to insecurity um, in Nigeria, and it's quite complex. You know, it's not we're not just faced with a single type of insecurity. It comes in different shapes and form, from terrorism in the northeast to banditry to kidnapping, to ritual uh, killings, it, and it's evolving. And the incident cases are getting more and more you know, by the day. Um, anytime you open your uh, TV station, there's always something negative with regards to insecurity uh, on the line. Um, we, do, we do recognize the fact that the, uh, the federal government is doing a lot uh, with regards to uh, interventions. Um, so we had the National Livestock um, uh, Transformation Plan, which Sahel, I think, is involved in. Um, there are grazing uh, reserve and commercial ranking ideas that have been broached. Um, there are issues around land use policy, um, drawing on AU's um, African Union's uh, Green Wall Initiative. Uh, there's a lot as well around um, kinetic military actions. Uh, but the question is, how effective have, um, have all these um, various interventions been in addressing um, insecurity, particularly in, in farming community, because the vulnerabilities are still there. Like uh, Mrs. Do said this morning, it's about the three Cs, you know, COVID-19, uh, um, climate change, and on top of that is a different layer, uh, which is about um, crisis. And the crisis in this case comes, as I said, in, in a very complex uh, format. Uh, so in winning the battle against um, insecurity, it's a collective action, you know, right at the center, all the way to the state and at the uh, local government level. So we, um, within the group, we, we, we spoke a lot. Um, people drew on their own personal experience. You have two minutes left. Yeah, I, I, I think I'm writing on the fact that I'm not committing to anything, so I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> Is that the strategy? <laughs> Right, so, so one, one, one area that we felt was very important is to devolve the, the, the notion of intelligence gathering. At the moment, we feel it's so centralized uh, at, at the very f federal level. And if this can be devolved to the grassroots, to the uh, to chieftaincy level, to the, to the religious leaders level, and build a framework around that, and also structure that flow of information from the grassroots to the security apparatus that will really enhance the, the credibility of intelligence gathering within that space and enhance you know, the response. And also within that as well, it's about trust. Because if I have myself as a religious, you just say that give you information and you don't act on it, you know, that kind of break down the trust between uh, the grassroots level and the, um, and the um, central uh, security agency. Now, the other issue was around border control because our border the reality is that it's very porous. Um, so there's a Sahel issue here beyond Nigeria. So issue of terrorism or banditry is not about Nigeria itself. It's about the entire Sahel region, which I think is very important. Burkina Faso, Mali, small arm, light arm, getting into Nigeria very, very easily. So uh, we suggested within the group that there's a need for the um, the federal government um, working with the uh, relevant um, uh, security apparatus to really deploy technologies like drones and uh, build capacity of the border force um, in combating the, uh, the menace of um, insecurity. And then lastly, very importantly, is about inclusive dialogue. That is very critical. One, don't, it's not about the federal government's issue, it's about all our collective issue and we have to all work together to ensure that we tackle this. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, I, I will give you a little pass because insecurity is tough. But I would say that you've, you, you, in your role at FCDO, there are a few critical things you can take. And we'll be coming back to you with what you're committing to between now and December. Because if we're going to get ahead of this food crisis, we can't wait. And with the elections, insecurity is only going to worsen. So we need some concrete actions, just like my brother from AFEX, my sister from GIZ. <laughs> We're coming back to you with some concrete actions. All right, madam. 
I'm sure Madam is going to blow us away with some very practical action steps. Thank you. Give her a round of applause, please. Thank you very much. I send you greetings from the Executive Director and CEO Nigerian Export Promotion Council, Barrister Dr. Ezra Yakusak, who is unavoidably absent, but made it possible for me to be here. Well, the thank you, Ndidi, for always inviting us. We are, we facilitated with Amina, we looked at the yet curtailing wastages and uh, in tandem with the mandate of Nigerian Export Promotion Council, we are looking at market. If there is a market, then there is hope. And if we are talking about market, we looked at the market drives production. So we are talking about product market combination, value addition, which is what the federal government of Nigeria is looking at. If you, you add value, you sell at a premium, you are sure your products will go to a higher, attract higher price. The farmer, everybody in the, we are talking of sustainability, we are talking about traceability, we are talking about certification, and then we are talking about everybody being happy. But then, to make it happen, what are those things that has to be done? Very, very critical. And we are talking about information gap, we are talking about knowledge gap, and we are not talking about closing the competency gap. If you are talking about the information gap, a lot of people don't know that what they have is gold. Talking about cassava, it can be put into many derivatives. Talking about ginger, it can be put into many derivatives. How does this happen? So, information is there. Uh, um, there has to be training. Not just training. We are talking about handheld coaching training. You coach. And when you are coaching, we are, you are demystifying whatever they think is not possible, make it possible. Then we're talking about the knowledge. They need to know what the market wants, how they want it, in what form, when. Very, very important. And with that, the, the SMEs will be able to draw up their marketing plan. You must plan. If you don't plan, you are bound to fail. I take an example of cashew that has just three months. Three months and the season is off. So if you are talking about that, you have to think uh, very, very far away. Then pro product development is key. Madam, one minute. And yes. I haven't heard who is taking on knowledge, information, we are competency coming. gap. Be patient. One minute. We are going to take any PC. We take that about training we are. That is our core competence. Trading in terms of export market. We will train and we will also share on packaging and labeling for export market. Okay? Yes. I can go. <laughs> yes. So NEPC is doing all the action steps. No, we're know. not doing the, all the action steps. Okay, I who think else? It, since I had some members that contributed, it's the onus is on me to only to share what we said one there. more minute yes that's why i took us through this memory lane in fact we talk things like innovative final but there's no need to repeat it right mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. what i said any pc can take with in terms of product development for export okay thank you thank you <laughs> thank you very much madam there's a lot of hope and promise in this space which is value addition and we think there's a huge role to play Thank you so much, sir. Let's give him a round of applause. I believe you're also from GIZ and you took on gender, closing the gender gap. It's all about, well, no, I'll take issue with that. My name's Andrew Smith. I work with, uh, with GIZ, but equity and inclusion, whether you're a 10 year old boy or a 10 year old girl living Fantastic. on Walter and Maggie every day, you're vulnerable. Thank you. So we Thank bring you. Everyone along. Thank so, you. It was interesting in that we had no politicians in our group. We had no captains of industry in our group. We had the people who are actually living at the coal face and having to hustle and solve their own problems. So the solutions which are, we're going to come out with are quite pragmatic and they're quite realistic, but they actually reflect the, uh, uh, the vision, the processes the World Bank would promote, FAO would promote, IFC would promote, and which Nigeria is signed up to. 
So I think it's important that we do recognize the fact, I will say women, but by women I mean the vulnerable. We need to recognize the fact that the, one of the primary drivers of the informal market are women, and it's accepted. It's not very interesting, it's not very sexy, um, but we don't have any numbers. So at some point we need to do some sort of critical analysis of the real value addition they have on the Nigerian economy so that they can gain their place at the table and demonstrate the fact that without them, this country will fall apart increasingly. And the majority of their tasks are in value addition. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at addressing post-harvest losses, they're the ones that are, that are small-scale processing, drying, cutting, splitting, spice blending, making money for their family. They never stop, but it's a business and it does have a, a bearing on the way your economy gets through day-to-day. Uh, -day. So what can we do in the next nine to 12 months? I think at local level, no high falluting national policy, no, no grand schemes. At local level, opportunities exist to use technology to actually look at the, uh, the activities taking place within growing communities, within farmsteads. Use this data through some sort of phone app. You could crowdsource it. It's something that we've looked at on, on GIZ. Um, but that data defines the economies of production. We know the amount of land. We know what's being grown. We know the demographics. We know how many women there are. We know how many men there are. We know what their likely demands are going to be in the future. But having that critical information located in a space means that we can then promote that. Those communities which have that information have a competitive advantage over others that don't do it. It's not expensive. It's not difficult. It'll take coordination. Where the data rests is an issue. Um, but it was also highlighted that you know, soil uh, productivity is diminishing, but the, the actual people involved in the grassroots are using mulching, they're using um, mm. organic solutions, but they're not using it well. And the policy is not being promoted at state level. There's no investment at state level to encourage it, but it is a way to mitigate some of the risks that they're facing in the forward. So, you know, what can, you know, the organizations do? We need to sort of define and refine the role of women uh, in post-processing create the space for them, create the investment opportunities for them in post-processing because they have the skills, they have the, uh, the commitment, they have the entrepreneurship to actually make a difference. Um, we need to help the actors to coordinate the information which we should be able to generate so that we can then create these business models. If we can create these local business models, we should be looking at uh, supporting access to finance at a smaller scale. Some of these communities may be looking at thousands of dollars, not the sort of million dollar tickets that you need. Um, and the resources, we need some sort of local staff development and mentoring. Maybe they're going to be in sort of agricultural outreach programs. Maybe it's going to be NGOs. Maybe it's going to be the donors setting these things up at local level. But they can develop the manuals. They can develop the training schemes. They can develop the applications that are needed that are, again, going to feed back into the centralized database. And, and then that allows us to catalog this, the scale and the potential and to maybe catalyze change at ward level. We could do these sort of initiatives for 10 hectares of land in every ward in Nigeria in the next six months. It's not going to okay. transform Nigeria, but it's an opportunity. Fantastic. So can I ask you, GIZ, which of these ones can you coordinate? Is it the data piece or the business model one? Because both. Both. Okay, fantastic. So Maybe. give GIZ a round of applause. They will coordinate the data and the business model piece. And I think we can actually support you Sahel, in the gender data piece, because that's huge. Um, and then I think we think through how we can get... No, I know. So let's just... I'm saying gender and inclusivity, but let's also think about how to involve donors who are all working on economic empowerment and inclusion um, so that they streamlined efforts towards these targeted approaches. But I like that if we have data around what women contribute at the local level, and actually quantify their contributions. It makes such a strong argument for financing, for investment, etc. So that's very practical. Let's give him a round of applause. Deji. All right. it's, it's not the best to be the last in this. You're video. not the last. You yeah. still have a few people ah, okay. who... <laughs> Brilliant. Perfect. So, uh, Go ahead. All right. So um, the name is Deji. Um, representing the starting and scaling resilient agribusinesses. So basically, I mean, the things we discussed um, are to do, has to do with all the issues we are facing in the agribusiness sector, you know, issues of the Russian Ukraine war, COVID, and all these issues. We know the impact they're having on agribusinesses. So, but I'll go straight to some of the solutions that we, we discussed. So one of the things we talked about was the fact that there are so many, um, you know, more or less like incubators that discuss 
or help company, companies to, to get more solid in the industry, to be able to learn the ropes. But the problem is that once they are done with all those training and education um, that they go through, that's usually the end of it. Um, they, uh, we feel that there's a need for mentoring, there's a need to hand old, you know, more or less like the white combinators of, um, of the sector. So, I, I mean, in, on, uh, with respect to that, there are organizations like African Food Change Makers that are already doing things in that regard. So I'm committing on behalf of Ramat <laughs> and the team that um, they are going to be able to factor, you know, some of those into the into the mix. But I think on my own, uh, from my own perspective, I'm also nominating myself to be a mentor to that kind of program. You know, if it if it eventually evolves to that, um, then we also talked about price vis uh, visibility. So we talked about following the money. That if you actually follow all the way from the consumers to the farmers, instead of just dwelling on the problems with the farmers, we will be able to resolve those issues. And one of the things we talked about in terms of following the money is in terms of um, getting price visibility for commodities and resources. You know, many people cannot plan. You cannot plan your investments, you know, upfront if you don't have that kind of clear uh, visibility. Now, the problem here is I'm not sure who we are going to commit to this because there was nobody in the group to. Uh, okay, FX is already committed to this. Brilliant. FX. Thank you very much. <laughs> it says you are clear all right uh, so that's one thing we discussed uh two more we talked about value chain specific financial products um i think somebody mentioned i can't remember where i think it was um, the gentleman here that a lot of banks and financial institutions don't understand agriculture i mean Sayo capital we can say that we understand and as a result most of the products that we've put out in the market they have been they have been tailored to the needs and the cycle of the you know of farmers and um, you know people in this sector and i think it's something we'll just do a bit more not just making sure that uh, we are putting the products out there, but I think from an education and information point of view, just to let people be aware of those kind of products. Um, earlier yesterday, I was still talking to a lady in the ag sector, but you know she's very particular about interest loan, and I'm like, look, from some of the things we are doing, we are very flexible, and we might be able to accommodate such even into the picture. So we'll be more, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll try and see how we can be more broad, broad facing in terms of. Um, finding a solution to that problem. Then the last thing is in terms of insurance. Now, this, this cuts across everything. Whether it's in terms of trust, the, ability, the farmers trusting the system to get payback from the issues that they're having, um, or even after they, they, uh, they understand the kind of products that are available, the kind of premiums to pay. Uh, so it's a, it's a big problem. And when productivity is affected, agribusinesses at the end of the value chain, they're affected. They can't uptake. There's no products to process um so this one i thought out about it um on what we can do at least there's a program myself and sugra she's sitting here a part of the color program um and one of the things we are doing is we are working we are doing a project where we're working with small other farmers in a part of the country uh, to access um solar powered irrigation pumps uh, just to be able to grow their crops and one of the things i think we would do is uh, there are one or two people in my group that are into insurance and we'll see how we can put in some of that into the pilots just to see at a pilot scale and then if it works we'll be able to hand over to organi other organizations that will be able to scale that um, ongoing thank you very thank much thank you thank you Deji. i want to ask you one if you can take on another one coming out of what you said have a convening for banks and insurance companies sahel capital can do this where yes. you do in agriculture 101 how do you fund in agriculture can you guys commit to doing this between now and the end of the year it can be a small group but the yeah. heads of agriculture for the for major the banks and the major insurance companies okay yeah well done thank you last but not the least our darling fisayo Kayode, productivity improvement manager of aldine uh, sahel consulting good afternoon everyone i'm representing group two and we discussed the topic driving growth and productivity improvement in livestock subsector we first identified the increasing demand for animal sourced food and um, the rapidly growing population and the need for us to quickly do something about increasing production efficiencies. Um, this livestock, um, we focused on our poultry birds, large small ruminants, pseudo ruminants and other micro livestock. We also talked about fish. For um, those issues raised, we identified various solutions. First, we need um, livestock focused um, policies. And for where we already have policies, we have talked about the need for the Federal Ministry of Agri and Rural Development to review those policies in collaboration with key stakeholders within the sector so that we can decentralize the policies and have value chain focused policies. So for example, we have a policy focused on poultry, 
we have another one on dairy, on meat, um, beef, and so on. So FMAD is taking that on. And we also identified and identified the need for NAPRI to this um, bundle their research institute because now we have just NAPRI doing animal production and research institutes. We need research in institutes that focused on the various commodities within the livestock um, subsector, similar to what we talked about in policy. Unfortunately, we don't have any representative of NAPRI here, so we'll find a way to convey this to them. Um, for NVRI, National Research um, Institute for Veterinary, um, we also understand that they produce vaccines and drugs, but um, it does not serve the demand of um, the nation. So we are proposing that NVRI should look out for opportunities to partner with donor organizations, private sectors to increase their production and produce more um, of these um, drugs and vaccines for the use of farmers and other um, development projects. So for example, we've been having the challenge around um, accessing vaccine, vaccination for foot and mouth disease, even on our program, and it's been very challenging. And then again, for Federal Ministry of Agri, Rural and Rural De Development, um, they've identified the need to go, back to go back to their states and engage and strengthen the Agri Development um, ADPs. They should be strengthened and resuscitated to meet the needs of the farmers at those states level. So we have those um, agencies, but they are currently, um, they, they lack a lot of um, resources they require to meet the demand of the farmers around extension services, pro provision of input support, and so on. And then we talked about curriculum at tertiary institutions. Um, we have Professor Kala, who is one of the representatives from the tertiary institution, and we are going to put, be putting this on him to look at how we can develop the curriculum and improve the quality of education. We want it to be practical-based and business-oriented for animal science students and um, vet um, students. Livestock 247 um, also talked about their activities around the engagement of veterinary doctors within um, various states where they work at community levels to provide services to farmers. This will increase the access to um, animal, good animal health care sensitization around biosecurity, preventive measures, and um, misuse of antibiotics. Livestock 247 had been nominated by me to commit to expanding this scope to other um, states and regions by identifying um, other funding opportunities, development programs coming up to, to enhance this. There's Living Thing Company, a, processing, a poultry production company that has volunteered to train, provide training and extension for people interested in poultry. So we'll get that contact and share so that um, this training and extension can be extended. We also have Indigo Farms. They are into aqu aquaculture that is willing to provide training um, for people to become skilled professional in aquaculture. Um, a representative from the poultry desk from the Federal Ministry of um, Agri also mentioned their current um, intervention on setting up climate smart poultry housing in some focus states. And um, we also have some poultry farmers that we've um, linked up with them. Kodaran is providing training and machinery uh, equipment support to dairy farmers at several levels, and all this will continue to, to do. I committed on behalf of Sahel Consulting, based on a suggestion made by one of the participants, on setting up um, conferences, um, organizing conferences on quarterly livestock action review, where we'll come together and see the progress of these next steps that uh, we have talked about. We'll also be Thank willing you. to champion carbon farming um, as we are looking to improve the response to climate change. Delhi Frost, um, a dairy company, is currently identifying smallholder farmers so that they would um, have access to markets, formal markets. And there's yeah. Livestock Genetics Africa that is willing to provide as share insemination for the suggested regional breeding centers to be set up. Um, okay. Thanks. And then finally, we have a, 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 an ag renewable energy company called Mammoth Electric, and that is willing to collaborate to set up solar powered infrastructure for livestock producers. Thank you. Thank you so much. You see that she understood the assignments. Eh? Can you give another round of applause to Fisayo?
We want to take one set, of, one more set of pictures because we missed Visayo, I think, in the last one. But why I'm saying we should give her an extra round of applause, not just because she works at Sahel Consulting, but because everybody in her group, almost everybody, said they're going to do something. Isn't that powerful? Please give them another round of applause. Livestock, please, can you all rise for a group picture? Livestock group, every single person see, sounds like they contributed. But I want to thank all of you facilitators. Come closer. I know it wasn't an easy or time and a very ambitious project for a short time, but the, the connections made, the ideas shared, very innovative ideas, and all of you contributed papers, most of you, and they have already been shared. All of you contributed papers. They will be disseminated to everyone who came for the conference. And we will follow up on these action plans because we made that commitment to AGRA, to GIZ, to ourselves that this was not going to be another talk shop. So please give them another round of applause. Thank you, Apex. Thank you, GIZ. Thank you, GAIN. Thank you, Federal Ministry of In Industry and Trade and Investment. Thank you. Federal Ministry of Agriculture, you guys have some deliverables. Thank you to everyone. Any PC, you have some deliverables. Thank you, everyone. All right. Okay, another round of applause, please, for. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And I'm fully aware of the fact that I am standing between you and lunch. This is going to be very short. My name is Aisha Hadeja, and I work with Sahel Consulting Agriculture and Nutrition Limited. On behalf of the whole team, I would like to say thank you, thank you, and thank you. I would specifically like to say thank you to our partners and co-sponsors, the Alliance for Green Revolution in Africa, GIZ, the EU delegation, and of course the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Also the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, the Federal Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, Federal Ministry of Finance, Budgeting and National Planning. Also not forgetting our speakers that came from very amazing organizations, Sebore International Farms, Enviro Grow Farms, Saro Africa, Bonita Treats, Value Seeds, Apex, the Embassy of the Kingdom of Netherlands, NEPC, GAIN, and FCDO. On behalf of, oh, and especially our participants sat here in this room and online, thank you very much. And as you have heard, these conversations are not going to stop here. We would follow up. We have your emails. We have your contacts. Thank you. Mungode, Dalu, Eshego. Have a nice lunch. Please, a round of applause for yourselves. Yourselves now, so I need a louder one. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Mungo de Eshe Dalu Rai. Thank you so much for coming, taking out time from your busy schedule to be here since morning till about this time. We want to say that it's been an interesting day, an interesting event. It's been very rewarding. And just like she said, we'll get back to you all. Uh, we'll send you messages because we have your contact. We encourage you to capitalize on the networks you have made here today and advocate for and implement more more inclusive and innovative approaches to transform Nigeria's food ecosystem. We'll be in touch with the consolidated outcomes of each break, uh, breakout session, which will be shared with you all. Thank you, thank you, and God bless you.